I hope you recognize that NaOH is a base. It's one of the classic strong bases. It's called sodium hydroxide, and it's the hydroxide that makes it a base in the first place. Butanoic acid is an acid. I'm going to draw its structure here. If you're familiar with how these skeleton diagrams work, one, two, three, four carbons for the butanoic acid. Maybe you'd prefer if I wrote it out. CH3, CH2, CH2, COOH. There you go. Now, when you react that acid with an actual base like NaOH, the H from the acid and the OH from the base are going to combine to make water. That's what neutralization reactions are all about. Those pair up. That's the same as me saying that those two pair up. That's why you get water like you do from a lot of neutralization reactions. What's left over, though, is this ion. And I say that because you've lost an H. So it ends up with a minus one charge. CH3, CH2, CH2, COO minus, and a counter ion of Na plus. So we end up writing it like that most of the time. You can often get away with writing it with the O and Na rammed together, but everyone knows that that's just a counter ion situation. They're not actually bonded to each other. There's an ionic lattice if it's a solid, but whatever. The point is, H and OH made water. The other two things got together to make a salt or another ionic compound. And here you are. If I was to draw that with these skeleton diagrams, I'd keep most of that chain, including the O, but then it's connected to Na. Beautiful. Water plus sodium butox, what is this, butanoate? I think it's sodium butanoate. Yeah, that's it. It's the double bonded O with the single bonded O, and instead of it being a, uh, a carbon chain like it would be in an ester, you have an Na there instead. Beautiful. Acid plus base makes a salt plus water. It's neutralization. I want you to know it. Good luck.